Aloha, everybody. Welcome back to another week of the Fogo Life. I'm your host, as always, Captain Ron. Today, we are going to Hawaii. We're going to take this pineapple, and we're going to wrap it in ribs, and we're going to smoke it on the big green egg. It's going to be awesome. Now, let's go. Yeah, so unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen somebody do this already. We're going to take this pineapple. We're going to cut all the peels off of it. We're going to season it, and we're going to wrap a rack of ribs around it. Oh, that's right. We're going to smoke it on the big green egg. It's going to be amazing. We're going to do an old 2 2 one method, because we're going to use St. Louis ribs. But wait, Ron, you have spare ribs. That's right. I'm even going to show you how to trim spare ribs down into St. Louis ribs. So the first step to cutting these ribs is to get our proper workspace cut. So I got this beautiful prep tub. It's kind of cool because it's a prep tub and a cutting board all at the same time. Now, if you're not familiar with what we're doing, this is a rack of spare ribs. Okay, it's the meatiest, biggest one. It's also the least expensive. Out of the St. Louis spare ribs and baby backs, it's the least expensive one to buy. So I personally like to cook St. Louis style ribs. They cost more money. You want to save yourself some money? Go buy some spare ribs. And right now, I'm going to show you how to trim spare ribs into St. Louis ribs. This is a really simple process here, okay? It's not hard. I know it seems kind of daunting. What we're going to do is we're going to take our rack of spare ribs, and one side sort of has a flat side to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip them over and put that along the bottom of our cutting board so that it lines up perfectly so we have a nice square edge to work off of. First thing we do, take off this flap. All right, we're gonna take this off. Do not get rid of this. This is called the chef's choice right here. This is a wonderful piece right here, and it tastes delicious. So, now from the end here, we're gonna count over. One, two, three, four. The fourth bone in is generally gonna be the longest bone that there is. So right there, we're gonna just kinda of take it, leave it lined up here. One, two, three, four. Go all the way out to the end of that bone and feel there's a little soft spot right at the end of that bone right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take it and cut parallel with the bottom of the cutting board. Okay, you can see I'm not going through any bone, I'm not going through anything, I'm just going through meat here. Okay, nice and simple. And then we're just going to take it, I'm going to line it up on the top of my cutting board here so you all can see it a little bit easier, and just continue straight across. Okay, you want to try and keep it nice and parallel so that they're nice and even sized. Now this is what's called like the brisket end of the ribs, a lot of people call it that. Um, you can use this to make rib tips. Do not get rid of this. This makes incredible, incredible rib tips. Smoke it next to your ribs, it's delicious. Now, as you can see, what we have here is something that's much more resembling St. Louis ribs. The last part I like to do, I like to kind of square them up. So I'll find like the first bone here and just kind of cut it right along there and square off the edge. Again, still good stuff. Okay. And there we have a rack of beautiful St. Louis ribs. All we have to do now is trim them a little bit. Now, these are nice meaty ribs, but what I like to do is kind of trim off any excess fat here. So this has really loose just hanging fat. We don't want that on there, okay? We don't want to cut all the fat off, but if it's loose and extra, you'll know what I mean by that. Okay, so we got that. And I'm going to leave this little bit on here. Hey, fat equals flavor and pork fat rules. The last part we want to do is we want to pull this membrane off the back because you can leave it on. That's fine. A lot of times when I'm making ribs, I'll just score it like this. Great. But for this, we want that meat from that pineapple to soak into those ribs. So all we kind of do is kind of scrape a little corner here. Okay, so you got the, I got a little corner pulled up. This is your friend. Paper towel is your friend. So we're going to take a piece of paper towel and grab that little piece of membrane and simply pull up. And that is a rib with no membrane on it. And on to our next step. We're going to put the ribs on the side for right now and prep our pineapple. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's go ahead and season these ribs. I'm feeling crazy. You know why? The longer the seasoning sets on them, the more the seasoning sets in there. It's called osmosis. It's going to take the seasoning and pull it down in there. And we're going to do a multi-layered seasoning here today. We're going to use Lane's Kapalua. I told you we were going to Hawaii. And we're going to use a little bit of Grill Girl Robin's Sunshine State of Mind. We're going totally tropical today, baby. And we're not going to go super crazy. Just going to give it a nice, decent coat. OK, so we're going to do the same thing that we always do. We're going to coat all sides, OK, including the sides. That's right. Okay, just like this. Now, granted, it's mostly bone on the side here, but there is meat there, and we like flavor throughout our entire meal here. So we're going to start with lanes on this side. And now, a little bit of Tropical Sunshine State of Mind Craft Barbecue Rub. All right, it's nice because it's nice and citrusy. All right, we got a nice, good, solid coat on there. These are going to be so good. I'm totally feeling the tropical vibes today, man. Now, what we did to the top, we're going to do the same thing to the bottom. The beautiful part here is that we already pulled the membrane off. Remember I talked about scoring them? I'm going to do the same thing. Even though the membrane's not on here, I'm still going to score it. Because you can see 
there's still a little bit of a fat layer on here. By scoring it, I'm going to allow the seasoning, I'm going to allow that pineapple to penetrate through and get into the meat and get into the ribs. So we're going to have a much more flavorful end product. That's what we want, flavorful end products. Okay, so if you, weren't, if you can't really see too well what I'm doing, this is what I did. All right, I kind of just scored everything so you can see it has a nice score. And then back to rub. Season. It's the time of the season for ribbing. Okay, a little more Lane's Kapalua. There we go. Beautiful. Good. Now these are set. We're going to set these aside and let's prepare our pineapple. Prepare our pineapple is nice and simple. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take it, we're going to cut the crown off of it. This is the crown. All right. You want to try and make it a nice straight cut straight across. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? Okay. And all we're going to do is we're going to cut the rind off on the outside. We're just going to cut it straight down. Actually, I want, it to, I want to make sure that this is going to stand straight on the grill. So same thing. We're going to cut the bottom off. Just make a nice flat bottom so that it sits perfectly on the grill. Okay. Like that. And if you see it's a little bit off, you can adjust it, take a little more off the bottom. But I think that looks pretty good. And all we do now is trim down. And I like to go straight down. Don't follow the edge of the pineapple because we want to wrap the ribs around it. We want it to have maximum um, touchage. Maximum touchage? I think that's what we want. Anyway, straight down. Nice, beautiful pineapple. Oh, it smells so good. It's difficult to not take a bite of it, I want you to tell you. I must really care about you guys and girls. Last thing I need is, ooh, we're not all guys. Yeah, I know. A lot of women barbecuers out there, I love it. As a matter of fact, this rub right here, Grill Girl Robin, one of my favorites, and she's awesome. Talk about a wealth of knowledge, man, oh man. All right, so that's our pineapple. It's all set, not really. We're going to season the pineapple too. We don't have to go crazy. You don't have to worry about it. Just give it a good sprinkling. Okay. The ribs are already seasoned on both sides, so it's already going to have plenty of seasoning. This is just for good measure. All right. We'll hit it with both, right? Do you think we should hit it with both? Yeah, I think so too. I'm in a sunshine state of mind. I'm a singing fool. All right. And there we go. That is our pineapple. Fully seasoned, fully cut, fully trimmed. Isn't it pretty? And the last step is real simple. All we're going to do is take our ribs and wrap them around our pineapple. Just like that. Okay. If we're lucky, they will overlap just a little bit because we're going to take our spear. I call it a spear like this. You can use a, a uh, skewer, whatever you want. Just stick it through. Okay. Now we've got a pineapple wrapped in ribs. How cool is that? Now what I like to do is I like to use multiple skewers here. So I got one at the top here, got one down at the bottom. And if you don't have too many or whatever, you just break them off. I don't like them sticking out like that when they cook and they just burn up a little bit like that. But then I'm going to flip it around to the other side. Do the same thing. Just make sure that it's nice and held on to the pineapple. That's all. All right. And there we have our pineapple wrapped ribs. Oh my goodness, it's going to be great. Now, if you want to at the end here, you can hit it with a little more seasoning. We handled it a bit, so you can hit it with a little bit more seasoning. Just kind of set it down. Hit it, you know, just to make sure you got good coverage, because some of it does rub off as we're doing this. A little bit of work involved with this one, folks. It's not just always the simplest thing in the world. So that's our lanes. Hit it again with a little bit of Griddle Girl Robin, Florida Sunshine State of Mind. And there we go. Now, what I want to do is I want to let this sit while we go light the grill. Now for today's cook, we're going to be going indirect. So we're going to take everything out of here like that. Take out the convector like that. Now we're going to use our blazer ball. A lot of people don't really realize that the blazer ball is multi-use. Okay. I've been using this one for over a year. If you're not sure what it is, let me explain to you exactly what a blazer ball is. So it's a little cage here that we're going to put our fire starters in just like this. Okay. And we're going to close it up just like this. You can see it's not shiny. It's not brand new anymore. It's been used for quite some time, but right now we have no charcoal in here. We're going to go low and slow indirect with these. So I'm going to put this down in here and use our grill torch to light it up. Okay. We give it a second to burn. Now the idea of having the cage, because right now you're still probably saying, 
What is the use of it? I don't understand. All right, so what the use of it is, is that now air comes in from the bottom on a big green egg. It comes in the bottom vent. By doing this, we're gonna pour the charcoal on top of that. The cage, the blaze of all, allows us to pour the charcoal on there and not snuff out the starter. So it's a really great way to do it. Today we're gonna use our super premium charcoal. I mean, you wanna know why? <laughs> this is why. Look at the size of the pieces that are in here. It's unbelievable, there's a ton of them. So let's go ahead and fill her up and get to cooking. Fire's lit, we're going well with burnt charcoal. Time for some smoking chunks. Today, we're gonna use these. They're made from bourbon barrels that were used to age bourbon. Oh, it's a party in a bag. They smell unbelievable. But they're awesome because they're nice and wood and they have a charcoal. You can see where they were, the inside of the barrel was and they smell mm, so much just like a bottle of bourbon. So I'm gonna use three of these because I don't wanna overly smoke these ribs. So we're gonna set one right in the center of our fire so that one catches immediately. We'll kind of set these ones off to the side here just a little bit. So over the next hour or two, they actually really get going good. Put our convector back in. Put our grate back in. Isn't that great? <laughs> here we go. Let her go. All right, we got down to a clean smoke now. So we waited till we got some blue smoke, almost clear, and it is ready to go. We're gonna let this go for two hours. That's right, two hours just like that. We're gonna do what's called a two-two-one method. Two hours smoked, two hours wrapped, and one hour just resetting that bark and glazing with barbecue sauce for that ultimate finish, tacky, sticky, deliciousness. I can't wait. All right, we are now just over two hours into our cook. We're ready for our next step. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna wrap our swine apple, because it's pig and pineapple, in foil. Okay, we're gonna do what's like kind of a two, two, one sort of method here, because these are St. Louis. You know, if they were doing a whole spare ribs, we'd go three, two, one. Let's grab this baby off the grill and set it right on our foil. Ooh-wee, look at that. Looking good. Now, you could always just pick them up by the picks, okay, if you wanted to. If not, just do it like that with this handy-dandy ultimate spatula, and we're all set, okay? All we do now is simply wrap, okay? Now, we have these pointy spikes here. You can take them out if you want. Leave them in if you want. I'm gonna leave them. I'm just gonna be kind of gentle and wrap around them, okay? It still is holding the ribs onto the pineapple. If it's too long, snap it off. All right, now that step was the simplest. If you want to, you can add some liquid in here. You put some apple juice, apple cider, put some fireball whiskey, ooh, anything like that. But for our purposes today, I'm gonna leave it just like this. We got nice, juicy, fatty ribs. So I'm gonna do this and set it right back on the grill. One more hour like this. All right, kids. So first, we smoked them for two hours. Now they've been in the aluminum foil for two hours. We're gonna take them off, we're gonna sauce them, and then we're gonna let them cook for one more hour. So let's grab them off the grill, shall we? We shall, Ron, we shall. Ooh, we still got a little smoke going. See, that's the advantage of putting those blocks far apart like that. Wow, is that hot? That's the advantage of putting those blocks far apart like that is through time, they catch fire and start to smoke. So let's unwrap the present and see what we've got here. Ooh, yes, it is hot. Oh yeah, no better time than the present. Oh yeah. Oh man, can you guys see this? The amount of juice in the bottom of here, it's amazing. All right, they're starting to sort of come apart a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna take these off of this. Let's see how we can do this here. right back, I'm going to get some gloves. Now that leads me into a great little segue. We get asked a lot of questions, a lot of questions. Ron, how do you handle hot food all the time? Ron, uh, you know, uh, what temperature do I have to cook it for? How long do I have to cook it for? Well, what you guys may not realize is that there is always a blog and full recipe for everything we do in every video down below in the description, every single one. So if you have any questions, chances are good that they're in there. Hey, listen, I'm happy to answer questions. Hit me down below, ask me a question. I will answer every single question and comment that you put on this video and any video. But just so you know, there is a recipe and a blog in the description of every single video along with links to items like these. So what I did is I put on these cotton gloves then I covered them up with the, with the red um, rubber gloves so that I can handle hot foods really easily. They're available on our website. There's a link down below. Now, let's get back to work, shall we? All right, we're gonna take this off of here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm gonna save those beautiful juices. I'm gonna set this on the side. Not sure what I'm gonna save them for, but I'm saving them. 
And we're just gonna hit this up with some barbecue sauce, all right? Use whatever sauce you like. I'm sticking with the citrusy theme here, so I'm going with my buddy Red Dirt Rich. It's his brand new sauce called Old Citrus. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna lay this on its side, okay? Take my basting brush and then just pour some sauce on. So as I'm doing this, we're just gonna take our basting brush, spread it around, make sure the whole thing is covered up real nicely with sauce. Oh man, this is gonna be so good. I cannot wait. This is like such a tasty recipe because the beautiful juices from the pineapple soak into the pork, the ribs themselves, we know how good ribs are, okay? So we're just making sure that we hit the whole entire rack of ribs. You know what? I'm gonna go crazy and use a little more sauce, okay? Like I said, just make sure the whole thing is coated. Now we're gonna put this back on the grill for one hour. We might hit it a couple more times while it's on the grill cooking in that hour because I want full maximum flavor to. That's my favorite word, all right? Full maximum flavor to. But there we have now. You see how the ribs kind of shrunk down too? They're kind of the same size as this, so it works out perfectly. They cover up the pineapple perfectly. Now, we're just gonna go right back on the big green egg, same temperature, 250 degrees, for about one more hour. So here we go. Back to sleep for one more hour. Two hours of smoke, two hours in foil, and one with the sauce getting tacky. Let's go pull that pineapple rib off. Oh, look how awesome that looks. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got here. All right, folks, now tell me, does that not look awesome or what? It looks so pretty, I don't want to pull it apart and eat it yet. And it smells amazing. I mean, it really does. I want to just dig into this. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, I think that's our next step. All right, I'm going to get our prep tub back up here. I'm going to switch this over to my cutting board. Right. Ooh, it's hot. Man, it's hot. Don't forget to pull your skewers out. You don't want to go biting into some piece of wood, right? No. Look at that. All righty. Now, the big reveal here. Let's see what we've got. Oh, that's tender. Ooh-wee. Look at them smoking away. So you can see the insides. And if you can see that, the insides has nice seasoning. It's got nice flavor. And you can tell it's really moist. That pineapple actually got into the ribs there. It's hot. And they are definitely done. Look at that. Perfect. What I'm going to do now, I want to eat this pineapple. I want to eat the ribs. I want to eat them together. So I think the best thing that I can do is to cut a rib out of here. And let's see what we've got. All right. I'm going to take one right out of the middle because that's just how I roll. Oh, so tender. Oh, my goodness. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I mean, if that's not a perfect rib, oh, my goodness. It's so tender and it's so juicy. Oh, my God. I squeeze it and the juices are just coming right out of it. That is awesome. And I'm filthy. Mm, I don't want Finger looking good, baby. Now, a little bit of this pineapple. Also so tender. Woo, it's crazy. And if you look, okay, the ribs, the seasoning from the ribs got on it. Everything's there. It's all going to come, come together just absolutely beautifully. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to chop a little bit of this pineapple, set it across the top of the rib. Okay, give it a little chop here, like such. Chopping up the pineapple. There's worse ways to spend a day, folks, I can tell you that. Now that is what dreams are made of. Look at that rib. Is that gorgeous or what? You know you want to take a bite, don't you? The, the flavors are all going to come together beautifully on this. That pineapple juice is really, it actually helps tenderize the ribs as we're cooking them. So there's only one thing left to do, baby. You know what that is. It's subscribe. Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha. Subscribe to our channel while we got you. If you like what you're seeing here, if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment. Tell us what your favorite way to do ribs is. Are you going to try a swine apple? I think you should. Now, what you thought I was going to do, taste test time. Let's go ahead and check it out. That is really good. Wow. Not only that, okay? Look how perfect the bite is. It's not quite fall off the bone, but it is a perfect bite through tender, tender, tender rib. All right? That's what we're looking for here. I don't always like fall off the bone. The family, they do. They like fall off the bone. Not me. I like when you can actually see the shape of the bite there. It's just tender enough. So it's, it's absolutely amazing. The chopped pineapple on top really finished it off beautifully. And this sauce from Red Dirt Rich, my goodness. He dropped some off the other day and I'm just so glad he did. 
because it goes perfectly. I mean perfectly for this recipe. So we got our beautiful ribs, we got our pineapple here. Guys, go ahead and make this. You're gonna wanna do it. No wonder why it's been so viral all over YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, it's been everywhere. And I'm a little bit behind times making a video on it, but I'm sure glad that we did because if you haven't seen it or you haven't made it, it's time that you do. Go ahead, make it. Tag me, tag me, Captain Ron 302 tag us, Fogo Charcoal. I wanna see your creation of this pineapple ribs, okay? Because it's amazing, and if you don't make it, you're missing it out. So that's all I got for this week, folks. Thank you so much for joining us on the Fogo Life. I had a blast. I'm gonna go enjoy these ribs. The family's over, yeah, I know. The family's over there drooling and waiting to go in like this. Come on, come on, come on. So let me go help them out and give them some food, all right? Anyway, remember, get out and grill, okay? And we'll see you the next time on the Fogo Life. Captain Ron, out. <laughs>